Hi there. Now, in this video, I'm just going to be looking at part D, the probability of getting values from a probability density function. If you want to check out parts A, B or C, then I've done videos earlier on these. The answers here though for B and C are 2 and 4 fifths respectively, just in case you need them for part D. So if you'd like to have a go at this question, haven't seen it before, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, to appreciate this question, I feel that we've got to go back and draw the probability density function. And I did that in part B, and this is what we got. It was an inverted parabola going between 0 and 4. And because of the symmetry of it, we found out that the mean was in the middle here, and it was 2. So, when it comes to working out the probability, that a randomly chosen customer's queuing time will differ from the mean by at least half a minute, then that means if we take half a minute off the mean of two minutes here, that's going to be one and a half minutes, or three over two. And if we add half a minute to two, that's going to be two and a half minutes, and that's going to be the same as five over two. And that probability is represented by the area to the left of 3 over 2 or to the right of 5 over 2. And both these areas are exactly the same because of the symmetry of this curve. So all I need to do is work out one of them, doesn't matter which one, and double it. I'm going to work with the left hand one because it's going to have a zero in it and makes it a lot easier. So when it comes to working out that probability, let's just put an intro here, the probability the random variable x is less than 3 over 2, or it's greater than 5 over 2, well, it's given by that area, and I'm going to double it. That area is the integral of f of x, the probability density function, with respect to x and it's going between the limits 0 to 3 over 2. So 0 to 3 over 2. Just squeeze that in there. I hope you can see that. OK, so let's just substitute our values in. So we've got that this equals 2 times the 3 over two, 32 there. Just pull that out the front of the integral. It's easier to work with, being a constant. And so we've got the integral from 0 to 3 over 2 of f of x, which is now just the x times the 4 minus x. Remember, k was 4 that we discovered from the first part. So I could expand that bracket, and I'm going to get 4x minus x squared. And that's integrated all with respect to x. OK? So what have we got? We've got here. 3 over 16, the 2 cancels into the 32, 16 times, so you've got 3 over 16. And then I can integrate the 4x in the usual way, at 1 to the power, so that's x squared over 2. And then we get 4 times x squared over 2, which is going to give me 2x squared. And then I've got the integral of minus x squared is minus x cubed over 3. And that's going between the limits then, naught. 2, 3 over 2. So all we need to do now is just substitute our limits in. So if we substitute 3 over 2 in for x in here, the first term comes to 9 over 2, and the second term comes to 9 over 8. Do check that out, OK? And then from this, we'll subtract what we get when we put naught through. Well, that's just going to be naught. And then work this out. And you find that you get it equals 61 over 128. And so that's your probability.